Hello everybody, this is Michelle with Stampin' Butterfly. Thanks so much for joining me tonight. I am excited to stamp with you and share a new technique. It's called faux tile. And um, it's a great way to make a different background for your, for your card. So we'll go into that in a few minutes, but I did want to share some fun updates that um, Stampin' Up! has going on. So I'm a, dem a demonstrator in the US and um, you can shop with me at any time on my online store. So I wanted to give you some new updates for March. So on in March, we've started this new um, online exclusives. And what Stampin' Up! is doing is three times a year, they are going to issue new products online only. So they won't be in our catalog, but it's a great way to get new products out to you guys. So we can keep items fresh and new and current, and they will be first come first serve. So they just released some in March and some items will be restocked and some won't. So we won't know for sure. So if there's a favorite, make sure you get your order in. If they disappear from the online store, then they won't be available anymore. If they say currently unavailable, that means more is coming in. So stay tuned and make sure you check back often to see when they come in. And we do have some projected dates. So if there's something that you're looking for, make sure you reach out to me and I can try to get you some dates on those. So that is some exciting news. Now, the other dates they have are July and November also. So stay tuned for more products to be um, showing up online. Our kits are also online. So if you are new to the kit collection, they've added some fun new kits too. And I just ordered some, so they should be coming this weekend, I think. So I'm excited to play with those when I get here. Some of the items I wanted to point out on the online exclusives, we have some cute stamp sets. Um, there's a some bundles and some uh, coordinating dies. Then we also have some standalone stamp sets, some gems, um, some punches. So excitedly, we um, have some circle punches back. So if you have them in your crafting stash, yay for you. If not, you can pick those up. I think they are back ordered right now, but they'll be coming in again. And then we have a three pack of embossing folders 3D that are really pretty. And you've probably seen some of those on Pinterest. And then the um, dies here, I'm super excited. I ordered these radiating dies. And I think they layer up nice with all the other rectangles and things we have. So stay tuned for that. Once I get those in and play with them a little bit, I'll share some inspiration using those products. The other thing that's going on is our catalogs, both the annual, which is this guy, and the mini catalog, which is this guy. Um, we'll be retiring at the end of April, or maybe it's like the first or second day of May. Let me see. May 1st. So what that means is our in colors from the 21 to 23 year will be retiring as well as a lot of products out of these catalogs. So now they are kind of as supplies last. So be sure to check back and um, check your wish list and see if there's anything that you want before it sells out because they won't be restocking. So if stuff's in low inventory, you may want to pick up your items soon. So I'm rambling away, but I didn't double check to see where I was at. So let's make sure, I'm just so excited to share this. Um, if you are here, please drop me a comment to let me know where you are joining me from. And um, let me take a peek. Okay, so I'm in the right place, I believe. So that's always good news. Um, the other thing I wanted to share is the in colors. So they will be retiring as well, and I'm sad to see them go. So these are our in colors, and they're upside down. <laughs> these are the in colors that are retiring, plus uh, polished pink, which I have over here. We're going to be using that guy tonight. And that is one thing that sells out very quickly. So I think a lot of them are already low inventory. Make sure you pick up your reinkers and your cardstock, ribbon, all that, if there's something that you love. So the, the colors that are retiring so far that we know of, because I'm going to go into something about that in a minute, are Pale Papaya, Fresh Frasia, Soft Succulent, Evening Evergreen, and Polished Pink. So if you have any faves, make sure you pick up all the, the goodies you need. Um, now the other thing I alluded to was they are, Stampin' Up! is doing a color refresh, which is always exciting because that means they're going to change up our permanent colors and bring in some new ones. Maybe some retired colors are coming back and then they're gonna retire some current colors. So we might actually see some of those in colors. Not sure. We haven't gotten any information on those yet, except for a little sneak peek that um, Pretty Peacock and Lost Lagoon are coming back. 
And if you've been around for a little bit, you probably know those and they are some of my favorite colors. So I do have, I didn't get rid of my cardstock, so I do have that in an ink pad from Pretty, Pretty Peacock that we will probably use today. Um, so I'll share that with you in a little bit as well. But I did want to share this information so you don't miss out. Make sure you check your wish lists and pick up the items you need. Um, so for tonight, let me give you a quick look at the cards we'll be making. Well, not we'll be making, but that use the technique. So this is a card made from one of my team members. And there's a post-it note stuck to it. <laughs> let me make sure I got the post-it note out. Yep. Okay, so this is a card that she had shared with me and I thought, wow, this is such a fun technique. I need to practice and try it out. So I've made some cards to share with you and what the faux uh, tile is that you emboss your card to make it look like um, tile work with patterns on it. And this one I did color on color, but the stamps are a little bit more difficult to see um, with this type of line art. So a solid image works a little bit better. I think the butterflies came out great. I was surprised by that. So this one's on Blackberry Bliss. But anyway, this gives you some ideas of what it looks like. And then tonight we're gonna go ahead and make, let's see. So we're gonna make this one tonight, the diagonal faux tile. And then I will show you how to do the regular squares. And we'll talk about the size of the paper and things like that. So let me know if you have any questions along the way. I will try to keep up with all the comments. Um, so the first thing you need when you're um, working on this, and sorry, I've got all my projects off to the side. <laughs> I've got to bring some stuff over. So the first thing you need when you work on these um, is a scoring tool. So Stampin' Up! has a scoreboard, and I find that's the easiest to use. Now, our paper trimmer also has a scoring tool, but it's a lot more difficult and it makes a fine line. So I don't think that scores as well. You could also use your stylus to kind of score within the blade, um, but I don't love that as well either. So let me show you quick. Let me grab the catalog. I'll flip you down and show you in the catalog where you can find the scoreboard. So if you're a paper person, then page 155 of your catalog you'll find your scoreboard right here. And this is what we're going to be using today. It's the Simply Scored scoring tool. Um, you could also use your paper trimmer. And like I said, it has a, a tray and you can use your stylus that comes in your take your pick tool or one from here. But I find it easier on the scoreboard. And if you like to make 3D items, that's definitely the way to go. Um, also, just real quick, we're going to be using the artistically inked stamp set. And I will show you the dies. They are really pretty and you forget sometimes about those because they came out in last year's catalog. So we're giving love to all the new products. Um, but this one just worked so well for this technique. All right, so we do need our scoreboard. And I wonder if this actually dried. It might stay. So I used a chalk pen that we had um, from last year to do this and I just put a line down the six inch and I'll show you why in a second when we um, move along to the diagonal scoring. And hopefully I have enough room in here. I'm gonna move my computer bag a little bit. All right, so we're gonna use this to score our paper. And I have a pile of stamps. We might change up which ones we use. I have some card bases. I did a little pre-cutting to save us a little time too because I just kind of want to show you how to score the paper. All right, so we will do both the scoring and then we'll do some stamping. So I like the score parts to be even. So what that means is we're gonna do one inch scores along the way. And you'll see that the margins on the card front are slightly different than the normal five and a quarter by four. And I did that because I wanted the one inch um, lines I didn't want to have and you could do this it looks good too you can barely even tell this one if I did the five and a quarter by four you can see that this rectangle is only a piece right because of the the extra quarter of an inch so we're going to use a uh, four by five piece of paper I've got my ruler we can double check the measurements so let's measure yep five by four and then 
when we use the diagonal, we're going to use a four by four square. All right. I'm already losing stuff. It's amazing how fast your desk gets unorganized. Okay, so the easiest way to do this, now your scoreboard comes with a stylus and it also comes with some gray markers, but I lost a few, so I have some extras. So that's kind of what those are. Um, so what you wanna do is you wanna start with your paper flushed against the corner, and then you can use the skinny side or the fat side. And I found that the fat side made a little bit deeper mark and it worked better for me at least the, i thought it looked better so you kind of play with which one works better for you and then what you're going to do is you're going to line it up on the one inch two inch so one inch apart now i tried it with a half inch and i think it was just too busy and you can do it twice if you want to give it a nice deep score and it's a little bit harder when i'm sitting down usually i stand up so Hopefully we're at the one inch. One of those looks like slightly off. I think I missed the three <laughs> or I missed the two. I'm at the two and a quarter or two and an eighth. All right, well, you get the idea. So there's a little bit of skinniness. Good thing it's a white paper. You guys can't tell it's off as bad. All right, so maybe I should put this right on the two so it makes it a little easier. And you could do that. You can move your score markers to make it easier to line up, especially when I'm trying not to stick my head in the camera. So. I ended up a little bit off, but you get the idea. So my little rectangle in the middle, it's not a square, but still looks cute. All right, so we can use that to stamp. Now to do it on a diagonal, you're gonna wanna be able to line up your corners. And the reason I did the line down there is once you line it up here, you can't tell where the six inch comes out the other side. See, I'm a little bit off, so. You're going to line up both corners in the six and run it down. And then you're going to start every inch again and run it through. So at the seven and the eight, then I'm going to turn my paper because it's easier to keep it on my right hand. I'm going to start at the seven and the eight. And then we're going to go ahead and turn it the other way. So we're going to get our diagonal down the other corner. Make sure you're all lined up and um, you could use your Sharpie as well to draw that line. I don't know how long my chalk marker will stay around, but it's helpful when you do other diagonal projects. So let's see if you can tell in the light. So there you go. There's our diagonal. So that's all there is to it. Oh, forgot to flip it over. <laughs> We've got one more side to do. All right. So we will do the seven and then the eight. Oh, that looks much better. It's even on all sides. All right, success. So let me move this out of our way. And grab a little stamp paper. I like to use the little grid paper that comes with the Stamparatus. It's just a nice little area to work with. And tonight we're gonna use the Polished Pink and Granny Apple Green. So we're gonna make a card similar to this one. And you can see the four by four fills up the front really close. So I did eighth of an inch border on this one instead of the usual quarter of an inch. All right, so we need some stamps. And here's our sample card. What else do we need? I think that's it, I've got my chamois. So now we're just gonna randomly stamp our flower and our leaves around our paper. And we're going to ink it up. Now this one has like a, it doesn't even look like it's inked. I don't know if you guys can tell on that, but it is a um, distinctive stamp. So it looks like there's not a lot of ink on there, but there really is. It's kind of cool. A little fuzzy. So we're just going to ink it up, put some flowers randomly around our paper. We can hang off the corner if we want and maybe we'll do it that way it's kind of even it's not very random okay maybe we'll throw that one over there <laughs> it looks a little less even all right and i'm just going to clean it over there so we'll close this one up and then we'll add some green leaves 
So these, they don't have to be lined up perfect, but um, you know, you can try your best. Let's see, who do we want to give the leaves to? Maybe this one. And you can see when I stamped down that the um, place where we scored is mostly not inked up. So it gives it that fun look. Now, if you push really hard, you might end up with a little ink in there and that's okay. Um, so you want to push down to get solid coverage, but not too hard that it goes into the crack right there. And hmm, now we probably didn't leave enough room over here. So we might have an overlap. Let's see how that looks. Well, that looks kind of cool. Maybe we'll do a couple overlap flowers and leaves. Yeah, I do like that. And we'll do one more down here. Kind of fun. All right, so there we go. We have our paper. Clean off our stamps. And we need a sentiment for this one. Let's, let's see, do we want to do it in green? I think we will. This time I did a label. I stamped on the cardstock here, but this time I thought we'd do a little label. And maybe we will use a sentiment from Seaside Bay. Thank you for everything. I think that one would be nice. So we'll just grab that one out of here and grab a block and then we'll ink it up and stamp it down. There we go. Not like that. All right. So you can see my chamois is well loved and inked up. <laughs> But it's always good to clean it in between so I don't end up with ink in a place I didn't want. All right, so now we can play with how to assemble our card. So you can see here, the tile looks a little bit different each time you do it, and that's okay. It makes it kind of fun. So this paper, like I said, it's hard to fit on your card front, so I just went with an eighth of an inch border. So it's four and an eighth square. So we'll go ahead and Put a little glue. Oh, it's a new glue, so it's nice and full. Coming out. All right, so we're just gonna set that in there. And the liquid glue does give you a little wiggle room, so if you need to readjust your card on your piece of paper, you do get that. Although sometimes it'll move when you don't want it to, too, so make sure you get it in the right place. All right, and then we have our card base. It's our standard four and a quarter by 11, scored in half. And then we're just going to stick that right on here. We could also center it. We have our tag. We could do it that way. So we could play with like which way we want our square. So you can keep turning it to see, okay, which way do I like it? I think I might like it that way. And then do you want it up at the top so you have that same eighth of an inch border all around it? Or do you have it kind of centered? and then do a little tag at the bottom. I think I like it near the top though. So I think that's what we're gonna go with. I like the even border around the edge. Ready. And again, trying to line it up so I have a little bit of border around each edge. And then we'll use some dimensionals on this guy. So put two of those on there. Yeah, I think maybe three. A little naked on the end. Let's see. There we go. Pull off our backings. This one I used some in-color gems on that one. Um, you can jazz it up with any of the gems you have in your stash. See, oh look, ink didn't come out good there. I could always try to cover that up with my tag if I wanted or put a gem on there. <laughs> but um, I think I like it over here actually. Kind of off to the side a little bit. So I think we'll go with that. Let's make sure it's even. Straight across. There you go. And then I didn't bring any gems over to the crafting table here, but you can add those later. Gives you kind of a fun look. All right, there's card one. So now card two, 
we're going to use, oh, sorry, that's kind of shiny. Move that out of the way. We're actually going to use our pretty peacock. So I was pretty excited I still had this. This is one of my favorite colors, and I have the ink, so yay. Um, the other color that is coming in our color refresh I mentioned is Lost Lagoon. And both of these, I believe, are in the new online paper, in our online exclusive deals that we have the um, ones I showed you on this flyer over here. So if you look at the really pretty paper in this um, collection, there are both of those colors in that. So it was kind of a sneak peek for us. So this is Pretty Peacock and this is Lost Lagoon. So we'll go ahead and maybe stamp in this color. Um, let's see. I think we'll try and I haven't tried this so it may come out good it may not so I think maybe we'll use these two images because this is kind of like a seaside-y color and they have a pretty solid image to them so they might look cool with this faux um, stamping technique so we'll give them a whirl I did put them on some blocks for us I had another stamp set in mind and then changed my mind at the last minute all right so here is our special <laughs> die cut all right, so where do we want to run? So this one's big, so maybe we do a, three of those and fill in with the little crabs. All right, see if it's still juicy. I haven't used it in a while. Oh, I think it is. All right, let's try it out. Looks good. All right, there's our clamshell with the pearl in it. You could even change up multiple colors. Like right now, I'm just using one color for each of these. Now they kind of look like a little Muppet or a, a lizard face. <laughs> okay, let's see. Now we'll try the crab. I always flip it over to make sure I've got a good amount of ink on the first, first go. And then if you have small stamps, you could fill in the holes if you wanted as well. That's cute, but I don't know. We'll, ooh, it might just fit. Let's try it out and see. If not, we could always stick a sentiment over there and change it up. If it's a spot we don't like. That came out pretty good. I love that color. I'm so glad we're getting it back. So I am super curious to see what other colors. Um, maybe Fresh Frasia will stick around. I do really like that. Oh, that one kind of looks weird, but <laughs> there we go. All right, so let's clean off our ink on these guys. Squeaky, squeaky. And, well, we need a sentiment. Let's see, what's it gonna look like? Yeah, I feel like that, now I can't see that. That looks like an eyeball. I don't think I can unsee that. <laughs> so we could put this offset or we can center it. I kinda like it centered. Now, if you wanted to trim it down to a different size, um, you could. Actually, this spacing is pretty good, so I'm just a little bit off, but you'd have to do some nice fancy math to be able to find your, you know, a little bit less than an inch. I mean, inches are really easy to measure on your board, but if you put your score markers on there, you could do them a little closer together, and I think it looks pretty good, so you could do it either way. But like I said, I wanted quick and easy, so one inch was the easy math with, um, you know, your equal sized paper without the quarters hanging off. All right, so let's go ahead. Well, we don't really have to glue it down. I just kind of wanted to show that to you. And we could always do a little sentiment. So here's one of our tags. We could pop that up on there, but it kind of gets lost. You know, so if you put a dimensional, we could add some pretty ribbon. I'm not sure if this is still in the catalog or if it retired on the last one, um, but it's old olive and pretty peacock. And it was one of my favorite two-sided ribbons. So it matches so super cool and we could even do something like that and give it a fun color and that does look really pretty together so maybe i will finish this card up a little bit later tonight and you can check back on my facebook page um, to see the finished card i'll probably go ahead and rescore it so it's evenly spaced so before i glue that together because i want it to be equal we will do that so let me see if anybody has any questions let me know if you have a favorite card or favorite color before they retire. All right, so um, let's take another look since I gave you a quick look in the beginning at the different cards. So different ways and different stamp sets that you could use this technique with. 
and different stamp sets as well. So this one with the sea foam on the back, it's a light color, but like I said, I don't think, yeah, you can kind of see it. I don't think this stamp set did as well for tiling. It just depends on, you know, the stamp set. You kind of have to play around and see which one works best for the technique. Like I said, I was happily surprised with this one. I think that looks great. And I wasn't sure because it's pretty open, you know, the butter, butterflies still have gaps, but it did really make it show off pretty nicely. And then tonight, here's our two cards. So just wanted to thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions or need help shopping, feel free to reach out. And if you enjoyed this video, please share with your friends and let me know if you have any other questions or topics you would love me to cover. And I hope you guys have a great night. Thanks for joining me.